There you go. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. So it's the fourth quarter. Two-minute drill. The game is tied. Kamala Harris has the ball on her own 20. It's first down, and she's going to do a Hail Mary pass. Yeah, yeah. Miss Kamala Harris holds a press conference, and she got everybody's attention. To say this. So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, he said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. You see what she just did there? You see what she just did there? She's trying to activate the haters. She's trying to activate the killers out there to get Donald Trump. There's the same party. That says we got to tone down the rhetoric. And here she goes again, trying to compare Trump to Adolf and try to get people, crazy people to go out there and hurt him. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, prosecutor. Now, if somebody tells you something and you try to use that as evidence, what do they call that? Hearsay. So, Kamala says that General Kelly comes to her and says that Mr. Trump is trying to be like Adolf. From the people who know him best, from the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. And it is clear From John Kelly's words, that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist. Now, while Ms. Harris is having his press conference and trying to compare Trump to Adolf, and he's a threat to democracy, her boss, Mr. Biden, is down the street saying this, that we need to lock up Trump. He thinks he has a right under the Supreme Court ruling on immunity. To be able, if need be, if he, if it was the case, to actually eliminate, physically eliminate, shoot, kill someone who is a, he believes to be a threat to him. I mean, so I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. Now, this is the same president, guys. His DOJ, this whole time, have been trying to put Trump in prison and now he just finally admits it that they've been trying to put him in prison your political opponent but miss harris is over here talking about trump is going to have unchecked power so the bottom line is this we know what donald trump wants he wants unchecked power and she's out here in public saying these things just to activate the killers out here Now, Mr. Kelly had four or five years to say something, write a book, but he never mentioned it. But all of a sudden, two weeks before the elections, all of a sudden, this bombshell drops. Right. We heard it all before. Y'all been saying about Trump eight years now that he's Adolf. Come on, man. This shit is weak. That's weak sauce, Kamala. She says what she says. Thank you. And then she just walks off. And this is her first press conference. She don't answer no questions. She says it. She dropped the mic and runs off. Two minutes. Right. And you think we're going to believe that? No. Second down, she gets on there and she tried to do another Hail Mary pass. She goes on CNN and try to have a town hall with Anderson Cooper. And let's take a look at some of the clips. I don't think I've ever heard the former president admit a mistake. A lot of politicians don't. Is there something you can point to in your life, political life or in your life in the last four years that you think is a mistake that you have learned from? 
I mean, I've I, I've made many mistakes, um, and they range from you know. <laughs> If you've ever parented a child, you know you make lots of mistakes, too. Um, in my role as vice president, I mean, I've probably worked very hard at making sure that um, I am well versed on issues. And um, I think that is very important. It's a mistake not to be well versed on an issue and feel compelled to answer a question. She cannot answer a question. She always circles around the question. Anderson Cooper was trying to help her out. Anderson Cooper is leading her to an answer. And she still won't take the bait because she's not smart. Well, let's talk about this compromise bill you, that you want to pass if you're elected. You said that's going to be a priority. It includes $650 million in funding for the border wall. That's something Republicans wanted. That was part of the compromise. Under Donald Trump, you criticized the wall more than 50 times. You called it stupid useless and a medieval vanity project. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on, they didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came for time for him to do a photo op, you know where mm -hmm. he did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing so, to a bill on. that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. But and I'm going to work across the aisle to pass com a comprehensive bill that deals with a broken immigration system. I think Jackson's question, part of it was to acknowledge that America has always had migration, but there needs to be a legal process for it. People have to earn it. And that's the point that I think is the most important point that can be made, which is we need a president who is grounded in common sense and practical outcomes. Like, let's just fix this thing. Let's just fix it. Why is there any ideological perspective on this? Let's just fix the problem. If, if, to fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump to actually still go to build the wall. I'm not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. CNN, after the town hall meeting, they went in her ass. I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I have been talking to, uh, and that is that... Uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe, but that's maybe the world that she's living in. When she doesn't want to answer a question, her habit is to kind of go to world, word salad city. And she did that on a couple of answers. Now all of a sudden, they're using the same words that we say, word salad. We've been saying that for two, Three years about Kamala. All she do is word salad. You think she'd be prepared to do this by now? You know, what's a mistake you've made? Nothing. What's a weakness you have? Nothing. What's the first law you want to pass? Nothing. What's a policy difference between you and Joe Biden? Nothing. Over and over and over. Empty, empty, empty. If she were an animal, she'd be a duck billed platitude. Damn. Ever since Fox News and Brett Baer exposed Kamala for not answering questions, it seems like all the media have caught on. Now they're all asking her the same questions and make sure she answer it and she just do the circular, the circular word salad. She just go around and blah, blah, blah. She'll talk for 10 minutes and you don't know what the hell she said. I hear you, but I think my question is, right now we're talking about border security and there's nobody, no Democrat talking about pathway to citizenship, uh, an immigration relief, am, and, and the, the benefits that migrants bring to this country. Oh, but there's no question that migrants bring, that America is a country that is, it was built in part by immigrants. But people are concerned who about their TPS, their DACA, their, um, we're talking about uh, mass deportations. I'm not talking about 
What do you Anything stand on mass deportations? You, what's, what's your stand there? This, we need smart, humane immigration policy in America mm -hmm. that includes a pathway to citizenship, putting more resources at the border in terms of security, honoring America's history as a country of immigrants, not vilifying people who are fleeing harm, but instead creating an orderly system for them to actually be able to make their case. And I think CNN, MSNBC, The View, they all have come to grips that she is not up to par. She cannot hold her weight. It's not only CNN, though. I think uh, we can place that blame, you know, across the board, not only cable news, but network news as well. Uh -huh. I think really what happened here is that we had those two assassination attempts against the former president. And uh -huh. the message that was sent out across the board was let's tone down the rhetoric. And in toning down the rhetoric, that silenced people that were calling him a fascist, a threat to society. That silenced factual information. Many of us still called him a fascist, How come we a dictator on, first one, on day one. But there have, has been sort of a, this silencing of factual information about the former president. And I think that benefited him. Well, that, am I wrong, uh, uh, Angela? Oh, honestly, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Oh, I like that. That's, no, Go that, ahead, that is, that, that, no, no. She's a weakling. She's a mental midget. Finally, they saw to see it. And who's going to win? Look, 10 days ago, I would have told you that she's going to win. And now? And I think she's had a bad 10 days. Why? Uh, because I don't think there's advantage and disadvantage to having come in the race as late as she as she did. The advantage is she she didn't have to go through all the primaries and go through all that that goes on that wears you down a bit. But the disadvantage is people don't know her. Now, although Kamala campaign is falling apart, I hope that none of us MAGAs are being complacent. Go and vote. I don't care what you see in these polls. Act like Trump is down 20 points because they're going to try to cheat. They did it last time. They're going to try to do it again. But we got to make sure this is too big to rig. They can't deny none of this. Let's get the popular vote and the electoral votes so they can shut up. They can't say nothing about no Russia, nothing about Iran, nothing about racism, none of that. Make it too big to rig, but vote early. If you guys got any value on my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. And hit that subscribe. I'll see you next time.